birthday, so it doesn't. You already know what time it is, me, 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 animated horror stories, animated horror stories, doom, 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 doom. You already know what time it is. It's just uh, where are we at today? Today we are at our good cousin's SSG Animations house. As always, please go over there. I'd be promising. I swear, I'd be having myself together. Please go over there, subscribe, like some videos, watch some videos. You know, make yourself useful, and then come back do the same over here. Um, yeah, that's it. Please go grab me blunt, a bottle of water, a bag of chips, and a blanket. Support's free. Support over here. Support over there. The cousins I send you, support them, please, because they support us. Um, Today, we're doing true horrifying stories cut on CCTV cameras. Mm, I love those because sometimes they'll throw a little snippet in uh, showing you that it's a real true story. Those ones always get me because what the hell do y'all be doing out here in the street? Let's get into it. Thank you again, SSG, for your support and you letting us react to your channel. Hello, my name is Jose. Okay. Let me start the story by making it clear that it is real. If there are some details that change from the original version, it is because there are much worse things that I am not allowed to tell. I that hope this story helps true. you to realize that no matter what crazy horror stories your friends tell you, the reality is often much, much worse. This happened two years ago, but damn, it still feels so real and so present. My wife was on a business trip when it all happened. Hmm. She has always been the businesswoman of the house. I'm Did more old-fashioned, I'm the one who does the craftsmanship. She and I met when I was just a Colombian guy who had just arrived in California looking for a job, and she agreed to do some work on the wall. Who knew we would end up having two children? But that's not the story you're here to hear, is what it? Are you, I mean, we're here to I hear whatever you I can't call myself a very brave okay. man, nor a coward, but there is one thing I know for sure. I would never let anyone hurt my family. That okay. night, I was at home alone with my children. I was in my room, and they were in their room playing video games. You don't have to be brave. It was a little late, uh, and I was ready to send them to bed, but on the way, something caught my attention. The neighbor across the street, Cindy, was having a problem. What's I looked out the window and saw her outside her house talking to three cops. Someone she looked her very house. worried and even angry, and the police looked like they were telling bad news. Maybe uh, someone had tried to break into her house. That's what Cindy I Cindy is a very right. nice lady, and we have a very good relationship, so the next morning I was going to ask her what had happened. Nice At morning. that moment, a sound oh, yeah, yeah, interrupted yeah, my then. thoughts. It was coming from the kitchen. Sometimes the cats would make noise and come into the house. They didn't bother me, but my wife was terrified of them. I went into coming the kitchen to the house. the cat had come in again and was trying to break not the glass your or something, but to my surprise, the noise was coming from something else. The back door was wide open. The noise was generated by the small door banging against the wall from the wind. I was honestly very confused. I what are you confused about? After dinner time. Was it one of the... What are you confused about? You see your neighbor out there stressed, looking worried. She's out there talking to three cop, you know, three police officers, letting her know some shit. You're wondering, ooh, what happened? Maybe her house got broken into. If there's three officers over there looking kind of concerned, looking kind of shady, and then you hear some shit in your house, obviously she said that there was someone up in her house. They checked that bitch. They ain't find nobody. He needed to escape. Ah, ah, ah. He escaped. Now he's in your house. Come on, Jose. The Get kids? it together. No, impossible. I was in the Stay kitchen up there a few playing minutes a before. Game. There was no way the kids would come downstairs without me noticing and opening the outside ain't... door for no reason. Come downstairs. Especially they since they were game. never naughty kids, let alone when playing video games. They were always like hypnotized. Yeah. Somewhat confused, I closed the door again and made sure it was locked. The windows were also closed, so no cat would get in. I went up to the children's room and told them it was time for bed. They fussed a bit and then agreed, not that they had much choice either. Why? Once I made sure it? they were in bed, I went to the garage to do some manual labor and was met with a scene that left me paralyzed. You seen somebody? The garage was a complete mess. Oh. Someone was in the house and they were going through all my stuff. The kitchen door wasn't open by any chance. 
someone had broken into our house. Dad! It was at that moment that I heard a scream from my son. Something was happening to them. I ran up the stairs at full speed. I didn't even have time to grab a knife or something to defend myself. I just knew I had to go and protect my children. When I entered their room, my heart almost stopped from fear. Hurry the twins up, were Jose! On their bed with the lights off. Who in was front that? Of them, barely illuminated by the light coming in from the window, a man was standing, staring at them. The man was alone in his underwear. Although he was quite short, he was intimidating. His body was covered in tattoos that extended up to his bald head. The psychopath was staring at my children while breathing heavily as if he was about to attack them. I remember that his face terrified me to the bone, but what left an impact on me, what left me shocked for life, was the look on my children's faces. They were frozen with fear, completely shocked. They were trying to cry, but they were trying not to make the slightest noise to upset the psychopath as if he were a blind animal. At that moment, my children looked at my face quietly. But just by seeing their eyes full of terror, I realized that he was asking me for help. At the same time, the psychopath also turned around and our eyes met. Sir, could you leave me alone with the children and go away? I'm not angry, but you should knock before entering. He was truly terrifying. Although he was breathing heavily with a body position that indicated he was going to attack me at any moment, his voice was soft, carefree, and even generous. This man didn't come into the house to rob us. He wanted something more. He wanted my children. Even though he gently asked me to leave, his face told me that he was furious and that he would not hesitate to attack me. When I considered the possibility that I was going to have to defend myself, I realized something. He had something hidden in his hand, and he seemed to be hiding it. Who are you? What are you doing in my house? What is it that you have there? Oh, this. This is yours. I borrowed it. I hope you don't mind. Then the man raised his hand and revealed that he had a drill in it. My punch, and I'm sure he was using it to attack me. You should leave, now. As soon as he said this, his hands tightened. This man knew I wasn't going to leave. He was determined to kill me. Before he could land the first blow, I lunged at him with all my strength and threw him to the ground. I tried to hold his hand so he wouldn't attack me, but he was too strong. Our body difference was huge, but somehow he seemed to have more strength than me. I could see how the veins all over his body were standing out and his eyes were bulging. He must have been under the effect of some strong drug. Kids run! Hide! Now! Without wasting a second, my children ran out of the room, which infuriated the man even more, who kicked me and broke free from my grip. The moment we both separated, he ran after the twins, but I grabbed his foot and he fell again. He kicked me in the face to get free, but only succeeded in getting me to throw him backward. We both stood up and started fighting. I gave him a hard punch in the face that I swear broke my fingers, but somehow he got up. I quickly lunged for the drill, but he wasn't going to let me use it. He threw himself on top of me and violently bit my arm. I tried to free myself from him at all costs, but his bite was too firm. Ah After releasing me, he lunged for the needle again and managed to grab it, but that was a big mistake. Instead of focusing on the drill, I rammed him with all my strength and slammed him into the wall. The man took the full impact of my body and swore I broke a rib. He still wanted to fight, but I had the upper hand. With him overpowered and wounded against the wall, I hit him again and again until my fingers could no longer take the pain. The man hadn't lost consciousness, but he couldn't fight anymore. I yelled for my children to call the police who were in the house across the street while I held the man, and it took only seconds for the police to arrive and arrest the psychopath. As they were arresting him, Cindy came over and saw the man and told me all about it. A few minutes earlier, Cindy called the police because she saw a man in her doorbell cam. The man had a knife in his hand and was using it to try to break into her house. Once he saw that he couldn't get in, he headed for mine. At that moment, I felt at peace. I felt that my children were safe and that it was all over, but I had been wrong. Shortly after what happened, the police informed me that the man had been arrested and the charges were vandalism. Yes, you heard right. The man was only arrested for vandalism and was only in jail for a year. I don't know what will become of the man's life, but he is likely free back on the streets.
I understand that they are investigating the case again today, but the damage has already been done. You know what? I, I don't care. I'm at peace with myself. Cindy and I talked to the media and told our story. Now the only thing left is to protect our families and make sure they are never in danger again. This story is a depiction of what happened in a California home in 2022. After stalking a woman in her house, this criminal decides to go to the house across the street. In order not to violate YouTube's rules, underwear was added to the story. But the man was actually discovered by Jose Campos in his children's room being completely naked, with only a drill in his hands. After a brutal fight, the man was arrested. On June 29th, around 11.30 p.m., this man can be clearly seen on security video using what appears to be a metal blade attempting to break. I was always a person who believed in the security of my home. Can you blame me? Everyone feels safe and closed within four walls with a roof. Everyone feels that when they close the door, there is no more danger. I'll be honest with you, I was always an overconfident person and nothing would ever happen to me. The problem is that this confidence always lasts until something bad happens. And by a random encounter with fate, I didn't run into a thief. I didn't run into a kidnapper or an angry neighbor. I met a complete psychopath who wanted to do nothing more than kill me. That afternoon, I was at home on my day off. Since I got up for work at 5 a.m., I was used to getting up very early, even on my days off. I had recently separated from my husband, and since we had no children, I had the house to myself, empty. It was my first day after the separation, so I felt lonely. I didn't want to see my friends or go out with someone else. I just wanted to be alone. It was a little after 7 a.m. and I threw myself on the couch to watch TV until suddenly I felt a knock on the door. I got up from the couch and went to check. At first, I thought maybe it was the mailman, but then I realized something. That noise was not someone knocking at my door. That person was ramming it. I was so scared. I had no idea what to do. I went to my computer and looked at the CCTV to see who was outside. It was a man. A man I didn't know, wearing a Mickey t-shirt, was violently ramming the door. As if that wasn't scary enough. The man had several tools in one of his hands, and a machete in another. As soon as I saw him, the man grabbed his machete and started swinging it violently at the door. Was he planning to break it down? The man was desperate, nervously pacing back and forth, ramming the door and hitting it with the machete. My door wasn't very strong. If I didn't do something, he was going to break it down. I ran to the door. Maybe it was a burglar who wanted to break down the door because he thought there was no one in the house. If I called the police and hid, he was going to break down the door. I couldn't take that risk. Get out of my house! Hey, is that you? Sir, I called the police. They're on their way. It is you. Talk to me. Talk to me. Instead of placating the man, my words only made him angrier. The man went completely crazy and started banging on my door with all his might, using the machete to his heart's content. Why don't you just shoot me in the head? What the hell was he saying? The man was completely crazy. I decided to call the police as fast as I could. I knew the police station was pretty far away, but with any luck, they would have a patrol car nearby. I called and was told that the police were on their way. When I cut the call, 
I looked outside again through the camera. No one was there. Was the psycho gone? I breathed calmly, and even though I was still at risk, the worst was over. Or so I thought. I didn't have a chance to think about what I would tell to the police for even 10 seconds when a horrible feeling of alertness and terror came over me again. I was hearing noises again, but this time, they weren't coming from the front door. They were coming from the attic. I didn't have to think too hard to understand what was happening. That psycho had climbed up on the roof and was entering from above, which to be honest, wasn't a very difficult thing to do. Immediately after hearing the noise in the attic, the small footsteps quickly turned into loud booms. This person had no intention of hiding the fact that he was in the house. I could hear him bumping into everything, desperately looking for a way out of the attic. This person did not give me the impression that he was trying to steal, as we had several expensive items in the attic. This man was looking for something else. He was looking for me. I ran to the kitchen to get a knife and stood scared against the wall. I had to get out of that house. Where were the keys? I had left them on the dining room table. I went to pick them up, and once I had them in my hands, I realized I could no longer leave. Down the stairs, blocking the exit door, was the man in the Mickey t-shirt standing there, staring at me. We may have both been staring at each other for a second or two at most, but inside me, I felt like we were doing it for minutes. I can't get his look out of my head. At first, it was a look of surprise. A look of someone who was looking for something and finally found it. After the surprise came anger. The anger of wanting to grab something and break it. Of wanting to break a toy into pieces. And at that moment, I felt like that toy when the second passed and we both reacted and understood what was happening, my first impulse was to throw the knife at him and run away. I threw the knife as hard as I could, trying to hurt him, but I missed him miserably. He didn't even flinch and ran towards me as if I hadn't thrown anything at him. We may have been about 10 or 15 feet apart, but he was instantly behind me. I managed to get into the bathroom and slammed the door in his face before he hurt me. He didn't like this and in desperation, kicked her as hard as he could while I fell to the floor, crying in despair. Although I am putting it into words, I cannot convey to you the fear I felt at that moment. I was completely unprotected, locked in the bathroom while a man with a machete kicked in the door to break it down. At that moment, many things crossed my mind. What was he going to do to me? Was he going to beat me? Was he going to kill me? Was he going to kidnap me? Or was he going to do something worse? I felt a sense of helplessness and despair. There was nothing I could do. I could only wait. I grabbed the marble soap dish, praying to have a chance to hit him. But from what I heard behind the door, the chances were null. Ah, open up. Open the door now. I just want to talk. Open! No matter what I had in my hands to defend myself, I felt helpless. Hell, no matter how much I might have had a gun, I would have felt like the man would have ripped it out of my hands and then penetrated my stomach with it. The door was starting to give in. I wasn't going to hold on much longer. 
the man was completely furious. I was convinced that if he had opened the door, he would have torn me apart. But fortunately, that didn't happen. Just before the door gave way, I heard sirens outside the house. And quickly, some police officers started kicking on the door. Hello. Is anyone home? We received an emergency call from this address. Once the cops spoke, the knocking on the bathroom door subsided. And suddenly, the psychopath was nowhere to be found. A glimmer of hope took hold of my body. I was going to get out. I was going to be okay. I held on to the keys I had grabbed, and in a last-ditch attempt to save myself, I ran to the door and opened it for the cops. I know that maybe this was the wrong decision, and that I should have yelled at the cops. Girl, but they didn't dare judge me. Everything you did I was terrified, me thinking I was going to die. I just wanted to run to the police. I didn't want to be in that place one more second. Unfortunately, he got you. I paid for my impulsiveness. Before I got to the mm, door, he sliced the you. psycho came out of the corner and threw me to the floor. <sighs> as soon as he was on top Boy, of me, we don't need he that. grabbed my head and slammed it into the carpet. Oh God, they don't moment, hear this? I wasn't scared. 12 I don't hear this? Absolutely nothing. It was a moment of absolute confusion. Twelve. In my head, I was still going to open up to the cops. Everything happened so fast. I was so dizzy and disoriented. I felt an icy metal on the back of my neck. He knocked you in the back of the I head? I wasn't sure what it was. Suddenly, my vision went black. Yeah, because he just I knocked you in the back of the head. running down my hand. Oh! And then, I don't remember anything. But 12 came and got when you, right? When I woke right? up, I was in a hospital. I had a bandage on my head, and it hurt like hell. My ex was in front of me. He was still my emergency contact. He told that me everything you. that happened. That cold metal I felt on the back of my neck was the machete. And he oh. had tried to stick it in my neck. Fortunately, the door was loose from the man's attacks. Who's he? So the he, police broke it know? down and got in just in time to save me. Shortly after, I found out that this man had already attacked. So far, mm. he had cases for contempt of court, public exhibitionism, and a few acts of violence on the side. But nothing as serious as this. He was clearly out of his mind. But no one stopped him until it was too late. The man went to jail immediately. And to my luck, had many more violent acts inside the jail. Which culminated in him being committed to a psychiatric hospital. From then on, I lost track of him. Although there was no need for him to return... The damage had already been done. <coughs> I know this only happened a year ago, <coughs> but I'm still trying to recover from what happened by Girl, doing therapy. A lot of therapy. I don't even feel at ease in my own home anymore. It may not be that man that comes back, but if I'm unlucky, it, could be it will be another, and another, and another. Mm -hmm. They won't stop until I'm dead. On June 23rd, 2023, 20-year-old Darren Cavalier entered a home after attacking it for several minutes like, with a machete. Insane. After being arrested, the man was found to have multiple police charges and was arrested. To this day, the motives that led him to attack the woman are still unknown. He had none. Okay, my darlings, I'm sorry I did not get to commentate throughout the whole thing like I normally do. I had an important phone call. So my thoughts on the first one was that man really broke in that house butt naked 
And like I said, you don't need to be, you know, all big and macho to protect your family. That man said that he was not, you know, the most manliest and, you know, but he went up in there and fought for his kids. I am upset with that story because um, 12 was already next door. You know, I don't understand why y'all didn't. You, why did you not immediately? Hey, um, cops, can y'all come over here? My door is open. Once you seen your, once you seen your door is open, the twist with that one, that nasty ass twist, that they added some clothes on him for the story, that that man was found in his kid's room butt ass naked with a damn with a drill. Like, fuck, are you doing in my house? You nasty bastard! Get out. Story two, that girl pissed me off. She pissed me off. Um, I was listening. I was trying to listen. I was trying to, you know, that man at the door talk about some, hey, are you there? Are you there? You don't know him. You don't know him. You don't know you. So the fact that he at your door hooping and hauling and all that, he needed to go regardless. But other than that, that, that throwing the knife, why would you throw the knife? Once she said, I thought of throwing the knife, I knew it was going to happen. I knew her knife was not going to hit nothing. I knew he was going to dodge it. Whoop. I knew he was going to hit one of those. I did. I did. And once he did it, I was so mad for her. But who can you be mad at but yourself? Because you threw the knife. Ain't nobody tell you to throw the knife. And then 12 is outside. Um, How far was the door to the, you know, to the bathroom for you to be like, I'm in here. Because you ran out there. That man jumped on you, hit you in the back of the head, all types of stuff. I'm happy your, your, you know, your adrenaline to want to live kept you going and kept you on, you know, ready, set, go mode. Because other than that, you would have died. Talk about some, I don't know what got into me. We do. Stupidity. You've been dumb the whole story, but we're happy you're okay. <laughs> um, I don't feel as if I need to read do the whole thing i just explained to you guys my feelings throughout it if you guys want me to do this read whole video if you need to hear my commentary let me know and i'll think about it until next time i love you guys bye